Now, what are the afferent and efferent tracts of the cerebellum? Cerebellum ke andar kya aega? Aur cerebellum se bahar nikal ke kya jayega? That is what you should understand. So, there are three peduncles for the cerebellum. Inferior cerebellar peduncle, middle cerebellar peduncle and superior cerebellar peduncle. Please give me a board quickly. Quick, uh, give me the board. <coughs> So if you look at the cerebellum, cerebellum, here you have the brain stem. What does brain stem contain? Midbrain, pons, medulla, okay? If you have not read any anatomy in your first year also, first to guilt nikal do. Are mai nai pada na, first year mein, first year mein, e challenging topic hai neuroanatomy that guilt you have removed from the mind even a english teacher who don't know anything about anatomy when his child had cerebellar ataxia i still remember sitting in the ward explaining him the entire cerebellar anatomy ultimately for him to understand why his child has developed ataxia right i still remember there is one teacher called ram mohan school teacher english school teacher in a small village he asked a question that mere bete ko aisa kyon ho raha hai then i i told okay if you understand cerebellar anatomy you will understand your child better you can handle your child better because in neurology really you cannot do lot of wonders you d d d d bolte neurology mein. discuss debate discharge the patient with at most vitamins except that you cannot be able to do right so at least you should give that energy for people to understand their pathophysiology and anatomy of their own uh, clinical illness so that's the reason there's no tension you are all much brilliant guys cerebellum say ek rope upar jata hai what is that rope called? Superior cerebellar peduncle. There is one rope which will go to the pons. That is called middle cerebellar peduncle. And one rope goes to medulla which is called inferior cerebellar peduncle. Now, inferior cerebellar peduncle, middle cerebellar peduncle bring things to the cerebellum. And if cerebellum want to talk to the higher authorities, the inspector general of, director general of police is who? Motor cortex and the cerebral cortex. For that, it has to send the fibers through the superior cerebellar peduncle, reach the midbrain. In the midbrain, who receives those fibers? There is one nucleus called as the red nucleus, which will receive. Then red nucleus, after receiving... It can do one more thing. It can send the fibers down the spinal cord. Then what is that called? Rubrospinal tract. It's called rubrospinal tract. Otherwise, the superior cerebellar fi peduncle fibers, without stopping at the red nucleus, directly can go up and uh, meet thalamus. So that is basically called Cerebellothalamic pathway. So, there are the two ways by which it will go up. Is what you need to fundamentally understand. So, let us come back. <clears throat> yes. You have inferior cerebellar peduncle. What does it do to the cerebellum? It brings all the afferents from the spinal cord and the brain stem. What afferents it will bring to the cerebellum? Pura information, it is like a CBI. Recently, CBI is in a little challenging situation with uh, the top people having troubles with one another. But otherwise, it is like FBI, CBI kind of a thing. You have olivocerebellar fibers. There is one nucleus in the medulla called inferior olivary nucleus. Don't confuse it with the superior olivary nucleus. Superior olivary nucleus is associated with uh, uh, a different pathway. 
inferior olivary nucleus in the medulla is the one which is having a communication with the spinal cord right so spinal cord and inferior olivary nucleus in the medulla right so that is bringing fibers and informing a cerebellum niche spinal cord mein aisa ho raha bolke it will tell spino cerebellar fibers directly the ascending sensory pathways coming up through the spinal cord will directly go through the from the medulla they will go through the um uh, inferior cerebellar peduncle directly to the cerebellum third trigemino cerebellar fibers what is the importance of trigeminal all the sensory pain and temperature of your face no some hot splash of touch happened on your uh, face then immediately all that face pain temperature pinch everything from trigeminal nerve it will go to the sensory nucleus which is there in the um, sensory nucleus of the trigeminal which is typically located in the brain stem it will reach to the brain stem from brain stem that information will be informed to the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle so that is called trigemino cerebellar fibers then you have some vestibulo cerebellar fibers where is vestibular nucleus located 8th 9th 10th all the three are located in the medulla so this vestibulo cerebellar fibers they are receiving a lot of information about the balance from our ears all that information comes to the medulla and from medulla through the inferior cerebellar peduncle the information will go to the cerebellum so that is what you need to remember so olivo cerebellar spino cerebellar trigemino cerebellar vestibulo cerebellar all this from the medulla will go through the inferior cerebellar peduncle and reach the cerebellum second what is the importance of middle cerebellar peduncle you have in the pons what are the cranial nerves that are there in the pons doctor third fourth are the cranial nerve nuclei in the midbrain fifth sixth seventh are there in the pons so the sixth for example abducens aapke aankh you are you are having a lateral gaze this side you are having a conjugate lateral gaze that side you are seeing the beautiful ramu this side you are seeing the beautiful janaki that side all the beautiness that you are seeing here and there here and there should be told to the cerebellum because your balance ultimately depends upon whom you are watching in the reading room right so the contralateral pontine nuclei 5th 6th 7th their fibers will send fibers to the um, opposite side uh, cerebellum through the middle cerebellar peduncle so the fibers that originate there is a massive input from the contralateral pontine nuclei and uh, uh, they are the ones which pass to the middle cerebellar peduncle similarly the sensory cortex motor cortex in the cerebral cortex is there no the descending fibers come down and if they want to go back to the cerebellum they have to go through the middle cerebellar peduncle okay now you have a superior cerebellar peduncle what is it doing superior cerebellar peduncle is mainly efferent if cerebellum want to talk to the big boss cerebral cortex how will it talk it typically send fibers to the red nucleus in the midbrain and to the ventrolateral nucleus in the thalamus and from there it will inform to the from the thalamus it will ultimately inform to the cerebral cortex is what you have to ultimately remember so summarize you have a red nucleus at the level of the midbrain and the red nucleus afferent fibers it receives from both the cerebellum and also from the motor cortex it receives fibers even the motor cortex also descending fibers come down and inform the red nucleus and cerebellum also tells the red nucleus and uh, there is a pathway called rubrospinal tract what is rubrospinal tract from the red nucleus 
typically the fibers go down and affect the androhorn cells so the red nucleus will tell upar wala dgp sahab aisa bol rahe the dgp sir is telling no gun firing cerebellum is like district superintendent of police cerebellum is telling to do the lati charge so both the instructions will come to kiske paas aayega red nucleus red nucleus in turn will tell it to whom to the constable that is the androhorn cell so androhorn cell that way is influenced and uh, it will be told whether to carry on the motor activity or not how is it influenced it is influenced by the rubro spinal pathway which uh, brings the commands that are coming from the cerebellum and from the cerebral cortex is what you need to basically remember now what is the influence of the rubro spinal tract on the androhorn cell will it stimulate it or will it inhibit it you know another pathway you no know, pyramidal tract cortico spinal tract so cortico spinal tract what it will do it will inhibit the androhorn cell the whole job of the motor area of the brain is not to make our muscles contract it is to inhibit our muscles that is the main purpose of uh, our uh, cortico spinal tract constantly try to inhibit that's the reason if there is any cortico spinal tract uh, interruption what will happen that inhibition on the androhorn cell is gone and that will increase the deep tendon reflexes to become hyper reflexic in upper motor neuron lesion what is upper motor neuron lesion cortico spinal tract is called pyramidal tract or otherwise called upper motor neuron there is one more type of upper motor neuron what is that extra pyramidal tract what is that extra pyramidal tract this rubro spinal tract is called extra pyramidal and uh, how is rubro spinal tract uh, influencing the androhorn cell typically it will facilitate the flexors and inhibit the activity of the extensors that is the whole function of the rubro spinal tract it is inhibitory on extensors but facilitatory on flexors those androhorn cells going and uh, contracting the flexor muscles it will try to stimulate it those fiber androhorn cells going to the extensors it will try to inhibit them is what you have to ultimately remember so that is the story of rubro spinal tract now tell me doctor from where is the rubro spinal tract receiving the afferents from the cerebellum through the superior cerebellar peduncle there is a afferent going to the red nucleus that's how cerebellum tells red nucleus second cerebral cortex descending fibers also will come to the red nucleus and tell him together it will start from the red nucleus and where will it go it will go to the androhorn cell that is called rubrospinal tract is what you need to understand 